How many is the most amount of mink that you've had in here at one time? 22. <laughs> They'll start fighting and figuring amongst themselves to the point where it's serious. How old do minks live in captivity? They can live eight, eight years. Oh, it's okay. Kind of Reasonable maximum. Uh huh. Wow. I mean, they potentially could even make it longer, but exactly. I have never petted a mink before. This is the first for me. Played with alligators. <laughs> Don't make me put my tank top on. So, in your lifetime, how many mink have you owned and raised? Oh, I have no idea. Hundreds? Yeah, yes. A couple hundred, maybe. Yeah. Wow. You are the mink man. I've never counted it. So this is super exciting. This is Joseph Carter, the mink man, who I discovered and sent Ed out to work with AJ and Mark from Earth Energy Waterscapes, South Jordan, Utah. I'm Greg with Sakta This is my channel, Greg with Sakta and we're gonna go see some mink swimming in an aquascape ecosystem pond. AJ, why don't you jump on that? I don't wanna break with you. <laughs> And there he is, the man, the myth, the legend. My name is Joseph Carter, and I am the Mink Man. I've been an animal lover my entire life, training cattle dogs and cow horses with my grandfather. And I was an avid falconer in my teens and early 20s. When I was a senior in high school, I started learning about the American mink. I was told that mink were horrible, vicious little animals who were impossible to tame. Challenge accepted. I've been in love with mink ever since. Devoted the last 14 years of my life to learning about this marvelous little predator. I get mink from fur farms and give them a new life. In this new life, my mink live as naturally as possible, even hunting for their dinner the way a wild mink would. Good to meet you, brother. Can we go see some minks swimming in an oxygen ecosystem pond? Looking forward to it. Hey, that's a big muskrat. Wow. How you doing, bro? Sit down. What's your name? Olive. Olive. You are beautiful, Olive. I guess your mom must be pretty. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. So Joseph, how long have you lived here now? It's not that long, right? A year and a half. Yeah. What was it like working with Ed the Pond Professor and Mark? And it was awesome. It was better than you expected, right? Oh yes, definitely. <laughs> and I had high expectations, so. <laughs> well, that's good. So you got the fence up. Camp Cannon was here last week, right? Yep, he was here last Ooh, week. Look at this. That's Lammy. So how many total mink are we gonna put in here? Hey, this looks yeah. great. So we got it all rocked in so that the mink don't dig, right? Mainly to keep the water clean. Because they would be going straight in from the dirt to the water. So what they'll do is as soon as they get done swimming, they rub on stuff to get dry and then that'll collect mud and grass and debris and then they'll go right back in and the water will be just filthy. So that's why they got it all graveled in. All the gravel makes it so when they go to rub, there's nothing to rub on that'll collect debris or, or make it dirty. So this is going to be their Disneyland out here, huh? They'll be able to climb up a tree like this, right? And look out. Yeah. And then we got the metal guard up at the top so they can climb up the fence but not get to the metal. They'll yeah. slide down right prevents them from going all the way up and the reason it isn't all solid is because we wanted to be able to at least see yeah see them running around behind the rocks at the bottom there's a complete tunnel system uh -huh. there's an opening down here one at the top and then over behind this log is another opening so this mimics the muskrat dens the mink can chase fish into it they can chase them too and it comes up top and underneath that is the actual den the den so they can go into there and then joseph can lift that fake stump aquascape plug right there for the stump and then we actually see them in their den this is one of the hunters right Right here, right? Killing rats. Okay, who do we got here, Joseph? This is Mr. Boone. Aw. He was born on the 14th of May. Wow. He's about what pretty that big. Be? How old do minks live in captivity? They can live eight, eight years. Oh, That's okay. Kind of reasonable maximum. Uh-huh. Wow. I mean, they potentially could even make it longer, but... Exactly. I have never petted a mink before. This is the first for me. Played with alligators. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me put my tank top on. Yeah, let's see if he wants to swim. He just woke up, so he might be sleepy. You want to play in the water? Huh? You want play in the water? Yeah. You've lived with this for just over a month now? Yeah, it's been right, right about a month. And how's it been so far with training the mink? Super nice. It's so fun. The mink love it. And have they been going in the tunnels and stuff? Oh, for sure. This guy has it. He's one of the younger babies. Uh huh. But the older babies have all figured it out. They cruise in and out and in and out. The tunnel systems are so well hidden. Even when you have an underwater camera pointed right at them, it looks like the minks just disappeared in a crevice. The rocks. They just go. Well, that's why we use the black pipe at the end, so it yeah, wasn't yeah. standing out with the white. And yeah. the ecosystem is getting started. You got some little bit of algae growth, which is good because that's the healthy ecosystem. But you have crystal clear water. You can see the gravel and the rocks down there. Healthy water. Are you happy with the water quality? Oh, yeah. It's been really nice. How many fish do you have in here? I think they've caught most of the fish. There's probably one or two survivors. I need to <laughs> restock it. There might not even be any. I haven't seen a fish for a while. I stocked it really good two weeks ago. How many is the most amount of mink that you've had in here at one time? 
time. 22, <laughs> they'll, they'll start fighting and bickering amongst themselves to the point where it's serious. Uh -huh. We're always fighting and bickering, but I mean, we have to start noticing, okay, this is one's getting a little hammered, we gotta pull it out. This one's starting a little too many fights, we'll have to pull it out. And that could start as early as like in a couple weeks. You sell them to people that want to use them as pets or for hunting or what? Mostly hunting. I mean, they're pretty high maintenance, difficult pets. But yeah, there are people who try and keep them as pets too. Do you want to swim now? Or are you going to just play in the rocks? So what kind of people are buying the mink from you? So I've got one guy that's looking like he's going to probably buy a bunch from me in DC. He's got a unique all natural pest control. Uh -huh. oh, he, he might get you. He's got an all natural <laughs> pest control. He does it right now in just Patterdale Terriers. So little terriers like this black dog, but obviously they can't fit down rat holes. So what does a mink go for? A trained mink? It just depends. I really don't sell them enough. They like the idea, but they're just not. Yeah. So in your lifetime, how many mink have you owned and raised? Oh, I have no idea. Hundreds? Yeah, yes. A couple hundred, maybe. Yeah. Wow. You are the mink man. I've never counted it. I wish we had some fish in here, but yeah, like I said, it's been like three weeks since I've stocked it, so I don't think there's anything left. If there is, it's like one little smart one. We built this mink pond with different levels for different training effects. So up at the top, the real young mink can get up here and uh, swim around and get used to the water and getting in. There's more of an intermediate level here, which is in the middle. Down at the bottom is our deepest spot. That is where the more advanced swimmers and things can go in. They can also train in the shallows here. This area right there where the pipe is, is our underwater tunnels. And there's an opening down at the bottom here and another over here so the mink can get inside and it pops up by that log. And right underneath there is an opening. Underneath the stump is the den, the muskrat den. We have our intake bay at this end. Our pump is sitting over here. So this water level can fluctuate up to six to eight inches of water. It can be drained down to be shallow so they can hunt in the shallows or filled up higher just to have more water in it. Biological filter at the top, nice log waterfall, some good action and movement around. The reason there's gravel and rock all the way around is so the mink don't come out of the water, rub in dirt, and then take it back into the pond. They like to come out of the water, rub, get back in. So with the gravel, it prevents dirt and debris and things like that getting into the pond, basically making it out of balance. So we've had some really hot days. We were in the hundreds. The pond is starting to grow a little algae, but the water is crystal clear. We have our automatic dosing system over on the end to keep the bacteria levels up high enough and keep this water clean and clear. So this pond here, if we were building this with the waterfalls and all the rock, we got 15 tons of rock. If we were building this and you were getting this system put in, you were looking between twenty and thirty thousand dollars installed. A lot of custom rock work. We went and handpicked all of our stone. We use our round river gravel in the bottom, different layers and things to that extent. So what kind of meat are you feeding them? No breakfast this is muskrat. Okay, let's see that. They kind of purr. So do you trap the muskrat? One went under. Don't get him out in a second. So this is 22 minks here? Yep. Are they all related? No, I mean, a bunch of them are, but. This is a first for my vlog channel. So how much of their time will they spend out here in this pond when you're all done with the fence? These guys get out twice a day, two to three hours at a time, so uh -huh. four to six hours total. And I'll just leave the gate open and they can come and go. But I have the gate so that I can leave individuals in here. So like some of the other adults, I'll lock them in here for a couple hours and rotate them all. So they'll get like a couple hours each. Or I might use it for like an overnight enclosure. Someone will stay here overnight. So that's why we have the gate. But these guys will normally have full reign of the yard for their two to four hours that they're out. Now they're swimming right into the tunnel. Going in the tunnel. So you got to watch over there or over there. Because it could pop up right here. It could. With that black pipe sticking up or under. There it is. It came out over there. Yeah, there it is. So it came out between those two rocks on that V down there. If they take any fish or anything inside, it's creating a swirl. So it'll blow it out. So fish won't or anything they catch won't rot and stuff inside of it. So this used to be what he trained to make in. So he's gone from this to a beautiful aquascape ecosystem pond and everything else. So what are you gonna do with the old tank, Joseph? This is called the Jeffersons, moving on up, huh? It's beyond repair at this point, and it was like that actually just before the pond. So, so the pond came at good timing, huh? Yes, we're getting rid of that tonight. So why is this guy in a separate cage? He's the one who got out in the garden. Okay, so you had to bring him over here. What the pond does is that it gives me an opportunity to teach him in a more realistic setting than I ever could before without leaving home. So when they're young and little, there's no real reason to take the horde 
as I call them out in nature. I can do that like little Boone one on one. It's pretty easy. If I take multiple mink, they're going to lose them. I mean, that's just the reality of it. It allows me to have them swim in a very natural setup so that they can learn how to find muskrat dens, how to gain confidence swimming around in a natural body of water. So what that does is when we do take them hunting, finally about October 15th, they're born roughly the end of April, beginning of May, and they start getting out and playing at about 10 weeks old. End of June, beginning of July, all the way till the middle of October, they are swimming and playing and just kind of experiencing life. By having a pond in my yard, they don't have to wait until October 1st to see their first natural body of water. Mm -hmm. They have their own ones sitting here at home that they can play in. The main thing that really does is it makes it so that when I take them out for the first time, they're not bewildered. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're already used to being out in a big half acre lot and running and playing. The water aspect, as funny as it sounds, can really throw them off because they're not accustomed to underwater entrances on muskrat dens, for example. Well, here, they're already used to diving and looking for underwater holes and playing underwater and it's similar to home, just a different location. I was surprised when they told me how fast it would be and... It was the, two days, right? Two and a half. Two and a half? Two and a half days. So, but yeah, for sure the aesthetic beauty of it is far surpassed what I expected. And then the efficiency of it, the system for cleaning the muck that those mink drag in before I had the fence up. Mm -hmm blew me away because it would get really mucky when they were rolling in the dirt and then going right back in and then it'd be just hours later and it's back to crystal clear again and what's your wife think of it oh she loves it she absolutely loves it she's disappointed we had to put a fence around it i want it more open but i'm like oh it's gotta have control we can't hey maybe the front yard maybe the front yard huh oh yeah i want to have one in the front yard a water teacher is never done Thank you. This is a first for my channel for sure.